So one of the things the game maker is pretty good at is drawing stuff. If you want to draw a sprite on the screen, there's a function called draw sprite. If you want to put some text on the screen, there's a function called draw text. If you want to draw a primitive shape like a rectangle or a circle, there are functions for those. If you want more control over what you're putting on the screen, there are extended versions of all those functions which give you more options such as the color tinting and scaling and that sort of thing. It makes life pretty easy and it frees up a lot of time and energy that we could be spending on other parts of the game like gameplay programming. But what does it actually mean to draw a sprite? Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, Vsauce here, and let's talk about textures. So I've got a little demo program here that I whipped up in the span of about 2 in the morning last night. There's a couple different graphics, there's a, there's a duck who's running around, there are some doggos you can talk to. Uh, there are um, some tiles in the background, everyone likes tiles and flowers and that sort of thing. Uh, there's some UI up over here in the form of hearts. Uh, there are, um, you can you can run and the sprite changes, you can cast a spell and the sprite changes. You don't cast a spell because I didn't add that. And there are a number of graphics in this game, each of which are drawn in some way or another uh, using one of the functions that I mentioned at the beginning. So if you look over here at my asset browser, you can see that a lot of these are in the form of their own sprites. There's the doggos, there's a couple different ducklings, there are some flowers. Not all of these are actually in this scene because I couldn't be bothered to place them down. Nine slice for the text box. And the question we are wondering today is how something like this ends up on the screen in, in the place of your player and moves around when you walk. If you are not familiar with my YouTube channel, hello, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and doing things that you should never do with Game Maker Studio, such as making 3D games. I'm going to keep the math to a minimum in this video, but everything that you draw in Game Maker and in everything else in computers is stored on what is known as a texture. A sprite in Game Maker, like you see right here, and all these other sprites on the side over here, are a high-level abstraction of textures. When you draw a sprite, Game Maker has to first make sure that the texture that your sprite lives on is loaded into video memory before you can actually use it. If you're using a computer with a dedicated graphics card, that will be the actual memory that is physically located inside the graphics card. If you do not have one of those, the computer will instead use the memory that has been reserved by the operating system elsewhere. Like any other operation that will have you communicating between different parts of the hardware, this takes time. And in order to spend as little time as possible loading and unloading texture information from video memory, Game Maker gives us what is called texture groups. In different game engines or frameworks, you might instead hear this referred to as texture atlases. In this video, I'm going to be going with texture groups because that's what the engine calls them. And what a texture group is, is all of the graphics that you might want to try and draw at once, the game engine will put onto a single image. And then when the game is running and when you're trying to draw sprites on the screen, Instead of having to load in new texture information for each sprite that you draw, the game will instead be able to load in a single texture group into video memory and then reference it multiple times as it draws each of the individual sprites that are located on it. If you want to see what this looks like, you can go into Game Options up here in Game Maker Studio 2.3 and under Quick Access, go to Windows, uh, go to Graphics, and then there is a setting at the bottom relating to texture page size. The default is 2048 by 2048. This is usually fine, unless you're trying to build a game for some kind of ancient device that has next to no video memory. And if you want to see what these texture pages look like, you can hit the preview button. Uh, the game will sort of compile halfway, and then it will open a folder inside the Game Maker temporary directory, and it will show you something like this. I'm going to zoom in on it so that it's easier to see. But you can see there is a single image and it contains the tile set, which I'm using for the uh, the background of the room. You have a bunch of characters in the font, I'll get to that later, and then you have all of the individual uh, trees and grass and the nine slice box and all the character sprites all in one single image. You'll note that this isn't in any particular order. Up here at the top, if I can scroll, up here at the top the tile set has been all jumbled up. Down here at the bottom there are a bunch of sprites for the doggo and the duckling and they're just kind of all over the freaking place. They're not in any particular order arranged by sprite index or anything. Behind the scenes, Game Maker knows what the coordinates on this texture image are for each sprite. It knows that if it is to draw, for example, this frame of the duck's walking sprite, it needs to look up the information that can be found at this location on the texture page. And it then takes that information, puts it in a sprite batch, sends it off to the graphics card. The graphics card does a lot of math that I'm going to talk about in some day that is not today puts it on the screen, and then boom, you have a duckling on the screen. Now, I realize it would probably make more sense to say this later in the video when I talk a little more about texture coordinates, 
but I mention this fairly often in my videos because I deal with 3D stuff and this comes up a lot, and people always ask anyway, texture coordinates always range from 0 to 1. It doesn't matter how big your sprite is, it doesn't matter how big your texture page is, your sprite could be 32 by 32, it could be 32,000 by 32,000, texture coordinates always range from 0 to 1, with 0, 0 being in the upper left of the screen and 1, 1 being in the lower right of the screen. If you are trying to manually plot texture coordinates yourself, take the pixel value and divide it by the sprite's width and height. This will make sure that they are always between 0 and 1 and not often spaced somewhere that is not useful to you. On top of that, since the world of computer graphics doesn't believe in maintaining standards apparently, some tools like Blender will have the 0, 0 point of a texture in the bottom left instead of the top left. If you are working with a 3D model loaded in from Blender, you will have to either flip your texture sprite upside down, or you will have to subtract the vertical texture coordinate from 1. Otherwise, all of your textures will be upside down at best, and a scrambled mess at worst. Okay, rant over, back to texture groups. So that button will give you a little preview of what all your texture pages look like. Unfortunately, at least of this current update of GameMaker, I have found that it is not actually always accurate in what the images look like. If you want to see what these graphics actually look like in the game, uh, you can run the game in debug mode, which is this up here uh, button with a little bug on it, or you can hit F6, and you can run the game in debug mode. You can come over here. If you've never run the game in debug mode before, by the way, uh, the Windows firewall will pop up and ask you if you want to allow the, deb the debugger access. Uh, just click allow, otherwise it won't work. And uh, once that's up and running, once the game is running, you can come over to the graphics tab. If it's not open, go to debugger, windows, and graphics. Or is it surfaces and textures down here? And open this window and uh, go to the textures tab, which is the one that's open by default. Pause the game while it's running by clicking the little pause button. And uh, if you hit the refresh button, a lot of steps are now. If you hit the refresh button down here, this will load the, all of the uh, surface and texture information into, um, into the debugger so you can see what they look like. There is, as far as I know, always going to be a texture zero, which is this little one by one white pixel, which I believe is what GameMaker uses if you don't specify a texture to draw for anything. So for example, a rectangle or when you submit a vertex buffer, if you don't specify a texture. And then you will find there is texture one, which is the default texture group, which is uh, what you saw not too long ago. It has all the ducklings and everything on them the tiles, the font, the everything else. So that's interesting. Let me close out of that for now. Now, you often don't have to really worry about this yourself, at least for small games. 2048 by 2048 is four megapixels, which is honestly probably more space than most people give it credit for being. If you're making a small game, probably most of your graphics can easily fit on there. However, if you're making a game with a lot of graphical art, especially a lot of big art, and you try to fit more sprites and other graphics than can fit onto a single texture page, Game Maker will automatically scale all your graphics down so that they fit. It'll cut the size in half, it'll cut the size in a quarter if, it, if necessary. This is a problem that's most common to run into if you try to use like a 4K image as a room background or something. A 4K image is 3840 pixels by 2160 pixels, and if you're doing the math, that will not fit inside a rectangle of 2048 by 2048 and GameMaker will automatically cut those dimensions in half to fit them on the texture page, and that will generally result in the background looking blurry and the programmer wondering what happened. One, avoid using 4K images as room backgrounds. Two, if you absolutely have to, you can either increase the texture page size, which will allow more, uh, more graphics to fit in a single page. If you increase the texture page size to 4K by 4K, hey. then you're 38. 40 by 2160 image will indeed fit on a single texture page, or you can just cut it up into pieces and draw the um, draw the background in pieces. This obviously will come at a cost. Uh, 2048 by 2048 is four megapixels, which is at four bytes per pixel. One byte each for red, green, blue, and transparency, uh, 16 megabytes. But if you bump that up to 4096 by 4096, you are looking at 16 megapixels, 16 million pixels and that will take up 64 megabytes of memory just for that, just for one single image. And bumping that up again to 8192 by 8192 will give you a 64 megapixel image, which is suddenly a quarter of a gigabyte of storage just for one image. Remember, this is uncompressed because uncompressed data is almost always faster to process than something like a JPEG or PNG. That's probably fine if you're just targeting Windows, Mac, or Linux. Even an older dedicated graphics card probably has plenty of video memory to go around. But if you're trying to target something like HTML5 or a mobile device or 
some consoles. Regardless, if you're making a game for something like that, you will probably want to be a little bit more frugal with your texture memory usage. I am going to set that back to 2K by 2K. Let's close that for now. I am going to open up one of these sprites. Let's go after SPR underscore duckling. One of the ways you can manually uh, manage textures in your game is to click the separate texture page option in your sprite properties. Hitting this button will do exactly what it says it does. Each of the sprite frames in the sprite will be saved onto their own texture page in the game. I have 16 sprites in this, uh, I have 16 frames in this sprite animation, four for each direction. And this will result in 16 new texture pages, one for each frame of Duckling Sprite. I'm going to hit the broom icon. Game Maker keeps a cache of temporary files. This is to speed up compilation times so that it doesn't have to do things like reprocess the same sprite images over and over again every time you run the game if nothing happens. But if any of that information in the cache gets out of date, then you can end up with unusual graphical issues. Hey. Which I think nobody wants, especially when you're recording a video. So I did that. I'm going to run the game in debug mode again so you can see what this looks like. Uh, the game is running. I can move. I can come over to the debugger, pause the game over there, look at the textures, refresh, and you can see uh, there is texture zero, which is, uh, again, the one by one white pixel, and each of the frames of the duckling sprite are on their own texture page now, followed by texture 17, which is the default one, which is pretty much everything else. Now, if you're paying attention, you may notice that none of these images are actually 2048 by 2048. This one, the biggest, is 512 by 1024. The texture zero, the default one, is one by one, and all of the, the duckling frames are 32 by 32. The texture page option, which I have apparently closed, where is it? Here, Windows, Graphics. If you're dealing with other operating systems, by the way, if you go to the, um, the settings for that, that operating system, that platform, uh, the, uh, the option should still be there under graphics as well. I am just messing with, uh, Windows because I am obviously doing this on Windows. Anyway, this setting here, the texture page size, what I said before, or at least what I think I said before, about this being the texture page size that you will be using is slightly misleading. This is the maximum texture page size. You can have images that are smaller than this, obviously, because that's actually what all of these are right here, but the texture page size will never be greater than this. No matter how many graphics I try to add to the game, to a single texture page, it will never be larger than uh, 2 to the 11 by 2 to the 11. Just in case anybody sees this mismatch, no, you're not going crazy. If you're just going to put a single 32 by 32 sprite on a texture page, it doesn't really make sense to, uh, to write out almost 4 megabytes of, hey. of empty space surrounding it. Furthermore, if you tried to actually use that texture information for a vertex buffer, it would come out not really looking the way you want it to. Anyway, I am done with the debugger for now. The other thing you can do to manage your texture pages is to go to Tools, Texture Groups, and that will open up this dialog, which is Texture Groups at the top. You see a list of graphics on the side. There are a bunch of sprites. There is the uh, sprite that is the tile set. There is the actual tile set, and there is the, uh, the game font, which I'm using, which is just Core Your New because I lack imagination. This is where you manage texture pages themselves. You have a couple settings relating to them that I'll get to in a minute, and you have all the graphics that can be found on them. You can create other texture groups if you want. You can hit add new, and that will create a new one. Let's call this something like user interface, and for the sake of argument, we can put all of the user interface graphics in this texture group. There are a couple ways you can add something to a texture group. First, you can just click add resource graphics, uh, let's look for some user interface things, the font for one, and you can add that to, to the texture group. Uh, you can also, as you can imagine, go to the, let's uncheck the uh, separate texture page option for the sprite. Actually, no, I won't. I'll, I'll open up one of the other user interface sprites. So this is the nine slice sprite. You can go to group and set that from default to something else, in my case, user interface. You can also, and this is something I usually don't do, I usually just click the drop down on the sprite properties. Uh, you can right click a graphical resource which can belong in a texture group and you can go up here to assign texture group you can create a new one add it to the default or you can add it to the, one of the ones that you've created i'm going to add it to ui and you can see as i do that this list gets populated so there's the game font the nine slice and the uh, the heart icon i am going to once again clean the cache i'm going to once again run the game in debug mode 
and we shall examine the texture pages in the debugger to see what they look like. Uh, pause, the refresh button, and there are now a couple others. So there's the one by one white pixel, there is a texture group containing the uh, nine slice sprite, the heart, the text, and a bunch of empty space, and there is a texture group containing everything else. You'll notice that its size has changed to 512 by 512. Again, like I said at the beginning, the arrangement of sprites on here doesn't really matter as long as Game Maker can manage them automatically. What's this one? This is 256 by 512. Just wondering. So before I go any further, texture groups are one of the bigger examples of just because it is a cool tool that you can use doesn't necessarily mean that you should. Using texture groups wisely can mean that your game runs better, uses less memory than it would otherwise, but using them badly could also mean that your game will actually run worse than it would if you just left everything alone. So I said at the beginning of the video that anytime you want to draw something, Game Maker first has to load the texture information for whatever you want to draw into video memory before it can use it. As you can probably imagine, it will also unload texture information if it's not currently using them and it needs to free up space for something else. It won't necessarily do that if it doesn't have to. If Game Maker thinks it can get away with it, it will leave graphical information in memory even if it's not being used, and then the next time you try to draw something on it, the texture information will already be there and you won't have to wait for it to load. For example, if I bring up Task Manager over here, I have a, uh, in this computer here, I have a 1060 with three gigabytes of video memory. There's also some shared GPU memory, which is where stuff gets really hazy. But generally speaking, three gigabytes is more than enough video memory for most Game Maker games. So in my case, when I'm running a game that only has two texture pages and both a couple megabytes, the game will load both of them into video memory and they both just stay there forever until the game ends. And it won't ever have to spend time flushing them out or reloading them or anything. Obviously, this is nowhere near guaranteed to be the case. The number of different hardware configurations out there varies wildly, even if you're only thinking about Windows. If you're thinking about developing for mobile, forget it. Hey. And things that you might be able to get away with without a performance hit on one computer will not necessarily mean you can get away with them on all computers. If you want to see how often Game Maker is swapping texture page information around, uh, there is a way you can check that. First, I am going to delete this user interface group because I want to show it uh, going on while everything is on the default texture page first. And then, where is, uh, where is basically the player? OBJ player, that'll do it. Let's go into the players create event and uh, type a function show debug overlay true. And let's run the game. I'm just running it in normal mode now. I'm not running it in debug mode, although you can run it in debug mode if you want. You can see a bunch of numbers appeared in the top. So the uh, the real FPS, as Game Maker calls it, is a messy subject that I'll deal with later. What we are interested in right now is the number next to it, the five in parentheses. There's also a four, which is something else, which is related to performance, which I will also talk about some other time. The five is the number of times the Game Maker changes which texture page it's looking at when it draws things. The number will never get onto zero. The lowest you're likely to see it is probably around two or three, because even running in the background, Game Maker does some graphical stuff, which involves moving texture pages around, including but not limited to drawing the debug overlay itself. But if I were, for example, to go into, let's say, each of these sprites and check separate texture page for all of them, uh, we'll do the casting and running animations too, just for good measure. The uh, Reflucia flower can be its own separate texture page. The heart on the UI can be its own separate texture page. I think that's good. Now when I run the game, you will see that that number has uh, increased considerably. We are now up to 10 texture page swaps per frame, and the 4 has increased to 9. Again, that's something else which is related, but which I'll talk about later. So now each time it draws a frame, Game Maker is jumping between texture pages 10 times instead of 5. And that number will fluctuate a little bit as Game Maker does stuff in the background. You will notice, of course, that this has had very little impact on performance. Uh, if you're watching the FPS reel, it's pretty much stayed about where it was before, about 6,000, which means that each frame takes about 160 microseconds to draw, which for comparison is about 1 one-hundredth of the amount of time you'd have to beat if you wanted to have your game running at 60 frames per second. And like I said before, that is because each of the individual relatively tiny texture pages are existing side by side in my video memory, and they don't have to be loaded or unloaded. With that said, if you want your game to run as well as possible on as many different hardware configurations as possible, maybe you're trying to make your game run on the Raspberry Pi, 
Now that we suddenly have the ability to export to ARM architecture, you definitely want to keep the number of texture swaps in your game as small as possible. I'm running out of things to talk about. So I said I would, I would come back to fonts. Fonts aren't all that complicated. If you were surprised to see each of the characters in the font on the texture page, there are two ways of drawing fonts in computers. The method that looks better and does things like allow you to scale fonts up and down indefinitely is to use a font renderer. And that will draw each character as a vector shape, which is defined by mathematical equations instead of discrete pixels. And it will do things like draw curves with high precision and fill space on the inside of curves to make them a solid color. This is what something like Microsoft Word or Adobe Photoshop would do. The downside of being more flexible and looking better is, of course, that it takes way longer to process. So what usually happens in games is fonts are rasterized. In other words, drawn onto little individual sprites. And then each individual character in the font is treated as a sprite, which is, as you can imagine, much faster. And in the case of video games, usually all you really need. If you look at things like sprite rips from old NES games, you will usually see things like the letters A through Z, a couple punctuation marks, and the numbers 0 through 9, included with things like characters and houses and other sprites. And even today, fonts are treated much the same way. I'm sure there are a couple games out there that use special text renderers, but most of the time they're just rasterized. That's also why you have to specify a range on the font. Letters, digits, all ASCII, characters, that sort of thing. A few other notes. In the texture groups uh, settings page, there were a few other options that I didn't talk about. Allow scaling. Uh, most of the time you want this to be on. Disabling allow scaling will, well, obviously it will prevent the texture page from being scaled. It's mostly something you only ever need to do if you're doing something like drawing text a certain way and you find that if the text is scaled in certain ways, it looks funny. Most of the time you can leave that on. Automatically crop. So you may have noticed that some of these sprites that I have here are not filling the entire 32 by 32 or 64 by 64 frame. For example, this duckling sprite here, um, it's 64 by 64, but only this space in the middle is actually really being used. To cut down on the amount of space required, since there's no point in saving a bunch of empty pixels if you don't have to, uh, if you have a automatically crop turned on, GameMaker will ignore the top and bottom sections of this and a couple rows and columns of pixels on the left and the right when it saves these graphics to the texture page. And then when it goes to uh, draw the sprite while the game is running later, GameMaker will take that into consideration and it will adjust the, um, the texture coordinates that it draws accordingly. If you turn that off, and if I were to run the game again, I probably should have cleaned the project before I did that, but it's too late now. Let's pause, let's go to uh, textures, let's refresh the texture list. You can see that there is now more space in between each of these uh, each, in between each of these images. Notably, the duck the, the duckling casting and running sprites have more space around them, and the space that it has um, that it is using has gone up considerably from what was it before, five twelve by two fifty six or the other way around or something, and it has gone up to ten twenty four by ten twenty four. There's not really a reason to do this usually unless they're trying to do something unusual with, unusual with like drawing primitives. And in most cases, it's not worth um, having the graphics in your game take up a larger amount of space than they otherwise would have to. All right, let's close that. Mitmaps, the one below it, the option below it. This boils down to saving different copies of single texture pages at different resolutions, which makes it slightly easier to do things like scaling. It's mostly something that you only deal with in 3D. I'll probably talk more about this in a different video later. I have now mentioned like four separate future video topics in this one alone. Border size. By default, this is two. When I unchecked automatically crop, it, it went up to eight for some reason. I guess it thinks that's optimal. This will add space between individual graphics on a texture page. The idea behind this is to prevent graphics from bleeding over onto their neighbors and being drawn where they're not supposed to if you try to draw something with scale. If you try to draw something scaled up or scaled down. Default is two. Again, most of the time that's fine as with all the other settings on here. And parent texture group. If you want to have a collection of texture groups that are only um, have those settings applied when you are, for example, exporting to Android or iOS or something, you could assign one texture group as the parent to a number of children texture groups, and each of the children would inherit the parent group settings for that specific platform. Okay. I went on a lot longer than I thought I was going to here.
I feel like this should go without saying, but all of this has to do with the way the game is built, the way the game is compiled, and you can't change any texture group settings or any maps or anything like that during runtime. That doesn't really make any sense. All of this here affects the way the game data files are saved when you create an executable. One more thing. So there are a few functions. I haven't actually written any code in this, uh, in this video that I haven't just deleted. There are a few functions you can use called sprite get texture, um, tile set get texture, and font get texture. These I've talked about before when I've done 3D things. These will get a reference to the texture that a graphic lives on, so the sprite, the tile set, or the font. Older versions of Game Maker also had background get texture for when those resource types were a thing. You can't draw a texture directly or anything like that, but you can take the references to them obtained from these functions and pass them to a vertex buffer or something of that nature. Similarly, there are a few more functions. Sprite get UVs, font get UVs, and tile set get UVs. These fetch the specific texture coordinates of each graphic. Sprite get UVs takes a sprite and a, um, an image index. Font get UVs takes a font resource, and tile set get UVs takes a tile map resource. Does it also work for tile sets themselves? All right, the documentation says it works for tile sets. The, the help text at the bottom here says it works for tile maps. Which one is correct? Who knows? I'm guessing it takes a tile set and not a tile map. Regardless, these three functions return a, um, an array of data pertaining to the texture coordinates of each graphical resource, so wherever the sprite happens to live on the texture page. I am going to nope out of explaining these functions by saying that if you are in need of these, you are probably well beyond the scope of this video in the first place. Or alternatively, unless you're Juju Atoms, you should probably just hit the separate texture page option in Sprite Properties in the first place, and then you won't have a need for any of these. And I think that is it. This video definitely went on for a lot longer than I thought it would, but I really wanted to cover some of the stuff before I talked about some of the more advanced things you can do with textures and shaders. Okay, the code for this is in the video description. Let me get rid of those, since those functions don't even have the correct arguments and they're not being used. I did not actually make any changes here, except for these two backup font files that GameMaker saved when I messed around with the font texture group, and I don't really need. Let's reload those changes. In either case, uh, this demo project can be found in the video description if you want to mess around with it. It's not like a game with gameplay or anything like that, but if you want to like use it for whatever, go right ahead. Hey. You might want to switch out the sprites for your own, though, unless you really like the idea of playing as a duck. I have a Patreon for these videos, so if you want to contribute towards their being made, there is a link to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post about two videos a week, one tutorial tutorial and one Let's Make a Tower Defense. I hope you found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to David Key, Edward Holt, Indie Punch, Yona Guernsey, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to get a shout out at the end of every video, head over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.